Welcome to Around Town. It's a great pleasure to join you today. And with me is my special guest, Paul Brogan. And uh, believe it or not, it's the last week of May, last few days of May. Memorial Day supposedly has come, but yet the real day is not till the 30th. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm a traditionalist. And my father used to call it Decoration Day. Yes. And that's what it was yes. known, I guess, after the Civil War. It was, yes. But anyway, I made trips to five cemeteries and kept the tradition of putting nice. geraniums on. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, it just does not seem like it's Memorial Day. No. No, it does you know, not. I don't know about you, Paul, but, you know, it was always the 30th. It was. It was. When we were growing up here in Concord, oh, yeah. the parade was on the 30th, and it yeah. was a big deal downtown. Oh, my God. Huge parade, and everybody turned up. Oh, People yes. were 10 and 12 deep on the sidewalks. And As I told you off camera, I have home movies that my father took back in the mm -hmm. late 50s, early 60s, mm -hmm. of all the parades. And that one is, we've got two versions of it on there, and one has... The VFW Drum and Bugle Corps, mm -hmm. they were snappy. Mm -hmm. And then there was Concord High, St. John's High yes. School, pre yes. to Bishop Brady, mm -hmm. and Rumlin. Mm -hmm. And they were all marching. Scouts, Army <coughs> Troops, National mm -hmm. Guard, Color Guards, yep. Veterans, the Auxiliaries. You know, of course, the Gold Star Mothers would ride, right. you know, and all mm -hmm. the World War I veterans. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it was no. a good hour and a half. Oh, and he's, and nobody minded being out there. I mean, it was yeah. an important day to mark, and we showed up in force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, it's just a. It was. A, they said it was nine minutes yesterday, mm. Mm. but it's sad for a capital city. But they made it to a holiday weekend, and what are you going to do? Exactly. People are away. We've got to go buy that new car. Mm -hmm. We've got to mm -hmm. go buy that. Refrigerator. The big sales are on today. Yes. Did you know that? Too? Oh, yes. The TV is full of them. It is, it is. Or people are away for the long weekend, whereas when it was on the actual 30th, you were here because yeah. you went to school the day before and you went to school the day after, so you really didn't go anyplace that day. It was an important day to remember those we'd oh, lost, yeah. and, and it was drummed into us the importance. So oh yeah, too. And to go to the cemetery, yes. or even if you weren't, if you're a Catholic or whatever, mm -hmm. you still went to the cemetery, said a prayer maybe, or planted flowers. Mm -hmm. Or back mm -hmm. those days, they, you could put artificial wreaths on the graves. Yes. Now, Concord mm -hmm. won't allow artificial. They won't. No, oh, I did not during, Not during the spring to fall. Mm -hmm. From November to April 1st, mm -hmm. you can you put can do it artificial mm -hmm. Christmas decorations mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. it. But no, you've got to have real mm. flowers or nothing. Mm. And, you know, so it was, you know, and so I went to Bristol, Candia, Hopkinton, and Concord. Mm -hmm. Three cemeteries, two cemeteries in Concord. But, you know, it's just sad how it's gone. Mm -hmm. No, know? those were certain. Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and Fourth of July were very solemn and important occasions in which you reflected. Mm. And it wasn't all about holiday times. The only holiday part of the 4th of July was the fireworks oh, yeah. in the evening, yeah. and that was wonderful. But during the day, you you remembered what the 4th of July represented in your life and in the life of the country. Now, you mentioned that because yes. it's odd, because there's been a little discussion on the Heights as to who started that 4th of July celebration on the Heights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had one family who was, they did. Well, I went back in the Grange records, being mm -hmm. the historian, right. because this is our 105th anniversary, so mm -hmm. I'm updating the history. Well, would you believe, I found it. Mm -hmm. 1923, mm -hmm. Pine Conia Grange organized the first 4th of July celebration uh -huh. on the Concord Plains. The Plains, yes. Uh -huh. yep. And they continued it through the 1940s and the 50s. Mm -hmm. So I showed that, I guess you know, that, <laughs> that quite an end to that discussion. So well, the Grange, you know, was always so mm -hmm. civic-minded. Exactly. They exactly. were farmers, right. yes, but they were very community. I mean, the Grange Hall in the Heights was the center of attention. Yes, yes. It was Ward 8 for years, mm -hmm. there was square dancers, there was fairs. 
Even had a boxing match here. Mm-hmm. Can you mm-hmm. believe that? Mm-hmm. A boxing match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, you didn't come in for that. No, no, that, but that's all very interesting, and it's certainly in line with what we're talking about. But I'm yeah. so proud of you with your project, The Concord Theater, and you've got your book here. <laughs> I'm hoping that you will go down to Gibson's and buy this. I've got to get mine so he can autograph it, but I'm telling you, seeing that theater uh-huh. come back to life mm-hmm. is just a tribute to you and your mother. Well, no, no. I mean, it's a tribute to Steve Dupree also. Well, yeah, but he's... Yeah, Capital he's got, Center for yeah, the but Arts. He, yeah, but he's got the money, or he knows how mm-hmm. to get the mm-hmm. money or whatever mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. it. Yes, we owe Steve a lot in many ways, mm-hmm. whether how you like him or not. But... You were the one that brought us a lot of history about that concert theater that mm-hmm. I wasn't even aware of. Well, I'm like, I'm about that the same way you are about the Grange and making sure that people know that the Grange represents something far more than I would say 75% of people really understand. If you went up to most people and said, what does the Grange mean to you? They wouldn't understand, or oh, I don't know. I don't, you know, that's the kind of response. Or the answer is, oh yes, yeah. I think my grandparents belonged Belong to, to that, that way back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so people didn't really understand because the Concord Theater has now been closed for 25 years. They the don't they understand yeah. that you know, for 61 years, millions of tickets were sold to films. I mean, one movie. Valley of the Dolls, more than 15,000 people went to see it at the Concord Theater at the time when Concord had 28,000 people. Yep. So, you know, it was much like the Grange Hall, a beehive of activity and community. Yeah. People from all walks of life came to the movies. They didn't, yep. you know, and so uh, I think, you know, it was important to keep certain things. And I addressed the other things. I addressed the drive ins, I addressed the Star Theater, the other theaters that we had cinema yeah, in the three. I, I, I saw the thing. I always see the name on the building, but what was that like? Was that also that, like a theater? Or? Uh, very similar. That was owned by the same people that owned the Capitol Theater. Uh, it had about um, uh, a little over a thousand seats, a balcony. Uh, it was open from 1915 to 1951. So it was gone before you were born. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the advent of television, you know, put an end sort of oh, to yeah. it. But uh, it, between the three downtown theaters, the Concord, the Capitol, and the Star, in 1946, more almost one million tickets were sold in one year to the movies at the three theaters. That's, that was the year after the war. People were oh. back and feeling good and celebrating. Yeah. But that's how many people went and to the movies. You know, people repeated because movies didn't stay as long then. Movies changed twice a week and all of that. But uh, a million, almost a million tickets, that's a lot uh, toward the economy of the community and toward bringing people into the downtown area back then. So what's going to happen, and I don't mean to be negative about this, but with the Capitol Center for the Arts yes, and the Concord Theater mm-hmm. now coming into view, it's going to have a Red River. Uh, It's not going to impact at all because the Concord Theater will be known as the Bank of New Hampshire stage uh, because Bank of New Hampshire put up a great deal of money toward for the naming rights too. Um, But they're all doing different things. I mean, Bread River will continue to show films. The Capitol Center will continue to show um, touring stage productions and artists that can draw 1,200 people. Mm. You know, uh, because you don't want to play somebody at the Capitol Center that's only going to draw 300 people or something. And the Bank of New Hampshire stage will cater to three, 350, at the most 400 people for concerts. And then they'll also, the only films that will be shown there will be the Metropolitan Opera broadcast, the National Theater broadcast, the Bolshoi Ballet, things like that will be the film presentations. The other probably 250 shows a year will be concerts, bands, some with seats, some where the seats will retract and it'll be open uh, for people standing. They'll have a liquor license, of course. There's a bar upstairs, so people will be able to, and that will be open whether there's a production or not. 
uh, and it's it's really actually beautiful. I was in there last week, mm -hmm. and the view looking out toward and the new sign that says Concord will yeah. be neon like the old fashioned signs. So it's going to look very nice, but it's going to not be taking away from Red River and won't be taking away from the Capitol Center or the auditorium. I was going to say about the city Because the city auditorium, auditorium dance recitals, uh, this, the Bank of New Hampshire stage won't have the facility for dance recitals or musical productions like an orchestra, you know, Granite State Symphony or whatever, Symphony New Hampshire goes there, or the community players where you put on plays and productions. This won't have the ability to do that, so it's not going to be really taking away from that. They're, they feel there's enough to go around for every kind of taste. And we shall see, I mean, with time. Because I know Mark is talking about redoing Phoenix Hall. He wants to, Mark Sivorowski, um, wants to, yes. Yeah, everything, yep, yeah, right. Very right. true. Everything complements each menu, our producer just noted. Yep. And that is true. I mean, it... Um, Somebody comes into town for the Capitol Center and suddenly sees the Bank of New Hampshire stage and may say, oh, i got to check them out sometime. And, um, and I, I think people from the Capitol Center, when their show gets over, may walk down to the Bank of New Hampshire to have a drink at the bar because there aren't a lot of places open that will have food at 11, 11.30 at night. So it brings, you know, an opportunity for that. And Mark Sobrowski is looking into funding uh, to redo the Phoenix Hall. Why? Uh, Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so it because would be... The, the Grange had a big history there. Did they? Oh, yes. The National Grange came that. here several times uh -huh. in the 19, early 1920s and 1910s. Uh -huh. And they met at Phoenix, Phoenix Hall, Hall, and the Endicott Hotel was mm -hmm. the headquarters. Uh-huh. Wow. So the Phoenix Hall has a history in the Grange. Mm -hmm. But there again, it's a sad idol. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm surprised it, has. it hasn't been done. You know, if we're going to compete with Manchester, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we've got to have the facilities here to do it. We do. I mean, we're never going to have a place like... Used to be the Verizon. I don't know what they call it now. They, What's that? The Verizon Center, the ten thousand. Oh, the place. Southern New Hampshire yeah. University. Oh, and that's what it is. S, S, S and H, H, H U. Yeah. Um, we'll never have something that'll be, you know, showing Cher or Batman, the people that have come, come to there, because I don't think Concord I can want to support. see Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what we can do. Oh, I know, yeah. But uh, and, and artists like that can't come to Concord because yeah. they cost so much, like $100,000, oh, yeah. yeah. that in a, our largest venue, tw you know, 1,200 seats, you'd have to charge about three or $400 a ticket yeah. uh, to pay the artists. So, and, uh, so that's not going to happen. But And I don't think we'll ever be able to support huge stadium shows. But I think there's enough around. You know, the Capitol uh, Center had Peter and Gordon from the 1960s. Uh, well, but not that. in the big theater because they couldn't sell 1,200 seats. When did when they come here? About two years ago. I didn't mm -hmm. know that because yeah. Gordon's been dead. Yeah, this was right before. Um, oh, for God. So, yeah, two, three, maybe four years ago. Because Time Peter, by, has yes. Peter has teamed up with uh, yes. Jeremy, I think. Oh, uh -huh, from Chad and Jeremy? Yes. Mm. But uh, they played at what was uh, known as the Spotlight Cafe at the Capitol Center, downstairs in the Governor's oh. Hall. They set up seating for like 200 or so people, um, but now they won't have to do that because they'll have another yeah. facility that'll have state-of-the-art acoustics yeah. and uh, comfortable seats with drink holders and the whole... Mm. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. The seats are just uh, spectacular. Yeah. And that's the problem. The Capitol Center the seats are a little still the days of the fit movie theater. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, they've all been recushioned and repadded, and they're better than than they were, you know, years ago. But they are still, um, you know, because of space. They they could have put in larger seats, but they might have lost two or three hundred yeah. seats in the process. And uh, that then, if you don't have a certain number of seats, certain performers won't consider 
you know, Brenda Lee had it in her contract a number of years back that she would only perform in places that had 1,200 or, or more seats. So she was able to come there, mm -hmm. but she wouldn't have been able to play like at the auditorium because there aren't that many, as, as many seats. So certain artists don't want to perform to smaller groups. That's patriotic. And that's the Michigan fight song. I'll okay. Tell you, they know I'm getting ready for I'm getting ready to go to Ann Arbor. When you when do you do that? It be while well, we're debating either Labor Day weekend this year or the second game is Army. And I'd like to see Army, but unfortunately the ones that go with us can't go. Uh huh. Nice. There may be just one one friend of mine going, but mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. It's, yeah. It's my mobility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But. Um, um, the whole thing with um, Concord is the Palace in Manchester. Yes, yes. They are having some top-notch shows. Yes, and the Palace is uh, is taking over the Rex, the former Rex Theater on Amherst Street. They're redoing that into a venue similar to what's happening with the Concord uh, Theater. The Rex had been the King Cinema, then it was the movies yeah. in the 80s, yeah. and then it sat idle for the last 10 or 15 years. And uh, it was the first theater in New Hampshire to have stadium seating when it opened in 1940. Wow. That was considered very innovative. And they have just recently made a deal to take that over, to restore it, and to start booking for it concerts and smaller performances than they have at the Palace. So, yeah. um, so Manchester is a draw. I mean, it's 20 minutes away, and uh, a lot of people dash down there because, and it's easier than going to Boston by far. Just in parking, what you pay in Boston is prohibitive. Oh. But the biggest show we my we used to go with the cap uh, to the Concord City Auditorium. The biggest show we saw there was Dolly Parton came in back in the... Way back in the seven, well, yeah, early 70s. Early 70s. When she was with Porter, Porter Wagner. Wagner. And yes. the, the whole show came yep. here. Yes. And mm -hmm. I'll never forget mm -hmm. seeing her come on stage. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was like, oh God, all the guys went mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. with her. But she was, she, it was amazing that she came here, but... But that was when she was still part of the duo, yeah. and once she hit it really big with Here You Come Again, and then did the movie 9 to 5 in 1980, yeah. Yeah. and became a major solo performer, her price went right oh. through the roof, and no longer could, you know, I think that was even the Walker Lectures that brought the two of probably them at did, the time. Yeah, probably did. Um, <clears throat> And now they couldn't afford a hundred thousand dollar fee for for her uh, at all, and she doesn't tour as much anymore as she used to. No, because you figure that she's got to be up there a little bit, hitting toward the seventies. She's seventy three or seventy four. Yes, she really. Yeah, yes. And then Loretta Lynn, of course, she's ill, eighty something years yes, old. Yes, she's, she's not well she's, enough. She is singing again, and they want to go on tour a bit. She's not yet, mm -hmm. but, and mm -hmm. I just read that Randy Travis had another major stroke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, and Tammy Wynette has passed. So I mean, a lot of George years, Jones has passed. Yes, I mean a lot of the country artists that we knew. Yes, many yes. girls, all of them, Roy Acuff, all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, Vince Gill. I'd like to see him. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mm -hmm. mind going to see him. But there again, he commands big bucks. They, yes, exactly. And Brenda Lee is sort of crossover, but yeah. and she did a lot in her show. She did a lot of, of country music. She's in the country music yes, hall of fame. Hall of fame. Right? Yes, yeah. and she drew very well because yeah. uh, you know there is a large market in the Concord area for country music, oh, yeah. and and certainly of that kind of country and the Tammy and George and that whole era in particular uh, that that uh, crossed over and and was. was very well. Yeah, she's part of the Grand Ole mm -hmm. Opry, I know that, because mm -hmm. I looked mm -hmm. on there to see who was members of the Grand mm -hmm. Ole Opry. Mm -hmm. And they're adding, excuse me, yes. a lot of young ones now mm -hmm. that they had mm -hmm. never had before. Mm -hmm. So, but no, Concord is definitely at crossroads. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to either move on, or because Main Street, let's face it, Main Street is not for the... <laughs> Shopper anymore. I'm the mm -hmm. sure of the high, excuse me, mm -hmm. high society. It's a lot of restaurants, mm -hmm. and even then, look at the blank windows. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. The old Kresge store is blank again. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I mean, there's mm -hmm. two or three others. Yes. And, you know, the days of going down there on Friday night and shopping at Woolworths, Newberry's, Kresge's, Grant's, Sears. Pennies. Pennies, you know. I mean, they David gone. Heller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, that building yeah. is empty. Yes, again. Yeah. Hottie McTwaney was in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm anxious to find out what the big surprise is at the mall coming. Yes, I read that in the... Oh, um, they're just bubbling over. They can't yes. tell you who it is, but it's a big anchor store coming in there. And and then, of course, there again. Does that mean Sears is going to leave? Mm -hmm. Because 2020, mm -hmm. I understood their lease is up. Yes, yes. And Penny's isn't exactly packing them in either. Mm -hmm. Of course, when the mall originally opened, they were promising uh, a huge... Uh, uh, anchor stores, and one of them was Sage Allen, oh, and yeah. nobody in Concord knew what Sage Allen was. They didn't want to ask what's that? Thing. And that, that faded and Steinbach away. Went in, yeah. Steinbach yeah. went in, and, and didn't that, sur that survive didn't. too long. Bonton did the best. Yes, they lasted 12, 13 years or so, and I missed them, because they I had do. some really good... They had yeah, everything that the old Jordan Marsh had, or yeah. Macy's had, but a little less expensive. Uh, and I'm I'm sorry that they they couldn't hang in there because um, I mean half the mall is gym now yes or physical whatever is There's the school, school still up there it's still in there it's still in there. I don't okay. understand how they can afford that rent but yeah. they're in there mm -hmm. and then you get the hat box theater which mm -hmm. I don't know what mm -hmm. that is how much longer how how often they have yes. performances I think they're having like three or four a week but I don't know how many people go they only seat like ninety something people. So uh, they, it doesn't require hundreds of people to fill up for a performance, but um, I, I've not been. I've heard some good things about Truth it. Truth Infections is gone. Yes. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts is he, gone. Now he's opening his yes, own place. Yes, he's opening right? his own place where, on where Loudon, on Road. Loudon Road. Somewhere on Loudon Road near the area of, I guess, Arnie's. Oh, okay. Somewhere there. Of course, now, we've Dairy lost Queen. Dairy Queen. Well, yeah, then they got rehiring on there. I saw that. But and uh, Papa John's closed down mm -hmm. on Main Street. Yep. And that's supposed to be rehiring. Ruby Tuesday's gone. Yes, they're gone. You know, it's like, what the yes. heck has happened? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I liked Ruby Tuesdays. I so did I. The salad, salad bar was amazing. Yeah. And we don't really have very many places in town that have that kind of a salad and bar the, that's fresh. The yeah. cat and the fiddle son there, he closed his doors on yes. and Fort Eddie Road. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So I don't know how they do it. No. I don't know no. how they can do it. No. We have a new downtown place, the Post. Have you been there? No. The yeah. new Post people. Oh, yes. The new, okay. yes. Yeah. They've and they're now downtown. They sold up there yes. on Fisherville. Yes. And then they've now opened a downtown location. It doesn't look very big, though. It's not the it's old... It's larger than... It's the old hero, or... Are you, how, how do you pronounce G-Y-R-O? Um, Gyro. Yeah. yeah, or something. It used to be, 40 years ago, it was like a CVS kind of... No, that was... Toiletries, and... Um, wasn't that the shoe store that was in there at one time? Was there a shoe store? There was a shoe store or something in there at one time. But it was... Okay. It was at Emmons... Yeah. Then you had these two stores. Right. Well, then you had Brown and Salt Marsh yeah. next door to it yeah. for a long, and you had Concord Electric was in yeah. part of that yeah. after yeah. it was reconfigured. But there was like a knickknacky kind of store. Dana Colburn, her husband William Colburn, um, used to write angry letters to the Monitor, but she ran it for a long time. Uh, so. <laughs> It wasn't a prescription place, but if you wanted inexpensive hand lotion or Prell shampoo and things like that, that was the place to go. Yeah. But I but it, there were other things at other times that were in there. It was next door to Tonkin and Fraser, wasn't it? That, the, yes. The that's, shoe store yeah. was right in that area. Well, Tonkin and Fraser, wasn't that across the street by Penny's? Was it? Because Denmoy oh. Shoes started over there after Tonga, and then they moved over to oh. Kresge's. Oh, okay. And then they went out of business. Yes. And then them restaurants went in there, and then they went mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 
It's the, po the post is larger than it looks. I looked in the window the other day. They were working in there after they'd closed for the day. And there's actually quite a few booths, and there's counter, and there's tables. It, it, it fooled me, I thought. What, are they going to have three tables in there? But it's actually much larger than it looks. And apparently it's very good and very affordable. And we don't really have a breakfast, lunch kind of place like that downtown. You have all the little pastry shops, but you don't have, well, well you can go and get an omelet or something. Puppy Oh, yeah. Get yes. a hot dog. I won't do steamed <laughs> hot dogs, though. <laughs> But that's just a yeah. no. That's just me. But well, see, we used to do a star hot dog on Friday oh, nights. A amazing, beer and yeah. A star hot dog. Yep. Mm, mm. Well, it's like somebody forgot about Sophie's down there on Manchester Street, mm -hmm. the A and W Root Beer place. Oh yeah, because that's yes. closed now. Yes. Two yes. minutes coming, so we're, we're running out of time. How can I, we? We always. I just do. got here. All, you know, we <laughs> always do. Your mother, I assume, is doing well. She's doing very well. Good. She got her license renewed until she's 100. She went oh up God. for her 95th birthday and uh, passed everything. No glasses, 20-20 vision. And they said she can have five more years. And they said, we'll see you when you're 100. Well, so she good. went out and got her Fiat and off she went. <laughs> so, well, that's good. More power to her. Yes, exactly. So well, she'll thanks, outlive me. Thanks for coming on. Paul. My pleasure. It's so good and to be here. Invite me back next month and I'll sign your book for you. Yes, I promise I will have it then. <laughs> okay. Because I can't wait to read it. I love history and I'm just looking forward to that. Well, it talks a lot about downtown Concord and the changes in the stores and businesses and all of that. So yeah. you'll identify with Good. a lot of that. Good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on Around Town. Thanks to Brian Blackton, my director. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all soon on Around Town. I'm Dick Pat.